Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. Today we are going to talk about one of the very interesting stationary phase that is phenyl. We are going to talk about phenyl columns. The phenyl columns can be used for reverse phase liquid chromatography and they bring a lot of advantages in addition to the hydrophobic interaction. They bring pi pi interaction, they also bring the hydrogen bonding interaction in addition to the dipole-dipole interaction. We will talk about how these all interactions are possible in the phenyl column in addition to what are the commercial stationary phases available in the market. The phenyl base is a pi basic. You can see there are three pi uh, bonds present into a benzene ring and this electron rich body can actually donate the electron. So phenyl itself becomes the electron donating functional group. And this is one of the example of the phenyl stationary phase. We'll talk about all of those another stationary phases in the coming slides. The phenyl type phases can be useful when separating a variety of analytes including aromatic, polycyclic, unsaturated spaces due to the pi pi interaction. As you can see, if your phenyl column has got the pi bodies and if your analyte also has got the pi bodies, the pi pi interaction is very much possible in case of benzene or naphthalene and few more another examples. In addition to the pi pi interaction, the phenyl column can also bring the hydrophobic interaction because the phenyl ring gets connected onto this uh, silica based support with help of the chain. And this chain is what? The hydrocarbon chain. Hydrocarbon chain is again hydrophobic in the nature. So in case if your compound has the hydrophobic part, as you can see in this particular example, the alkyl chain is actually also gets interacted with the hydrophobic chain present into the phenyl column. So in addition to this pi pi interaction, as you can see over here, between the two pi bodies, the hydrophobic interaction is also possible. In addition to the hydrophobic interaction, the dipole-dipole interaction is also possible in case if your analyte has got the polar functional groups like amine, amide or carboxylic or hydroxyl. Hydrogen bonding is possible in case if you have the hydrogen donating compounds like acidic compound, for example, carboxylic acid functional group. So this hydrogen present onto the carboxylic acid can interact with this uh, pi rich body with formation of the hydrogen bond. Similarly, the phenyl ring itself is a bulky ring and it creates the steric hindrance. Especially the positional isomers like uh, ortho dinitrobenzene, beta dinitrobenzene, or para dinitrobenzene may not have the enough retention and separation onto the hydrophobic stationary phase like C8 or C18. But if you use the phenyl column, they may get separated because of this steric hindrance. So the steric hindrance or the steric interaction is also possible in case of the phenyl column. So how many interactions are possible altogether on the phenyl column? The first one is pi pi interaction, hydrophobic second one, third one is dipole, fourth one is hydrogen bonding and fifth one is steric interaction. The relative retention compared to hydrophobic phases is reported to increase in the order. I mean the halopatic compounds will have the least retention possible onto the phenyl column but substituted benzenes will have the increased retention and then the polyaromatic hydrocarbons so more are the number of aromatic rings present onto the compound more is going to the retention onto the phenyl column because the more are the pi bodies more is going to the pi pi interaction phenyl or phenyl hexyl phases has been categorized as L1 stationary phase by the USP. This is just for your information. Now, how this different, uh, how these phenyl columns can be different from one another? And there are five different 
points one has to consider while selecting the suitable phenyl column. Your phenyl column may have the different selectivity or retentivity based on to the number of aromatic groups. Because more are the number of aromatic groups present into the phenyl column, more is going to the pi pi interaction and hence more will be the retention. So mono versus biphenyl, you can see the difference in the retention time. Also the length of the alkyl spacer between the silica surface and the phenyl group. Our phenyl group get connected onto the silica surface by the alkyl chain. And the longer is the alkyl chain, you will have the better hydrophobicity or hydrophobic interaction. The shorter is the alkyl chain, you will have the lesser hydrophobicity or hydrophobic interaction. So this length of this alkyl spacer also is very important. Third one, the nature of the substituent groups on the bonded ligands, typically methyl or more sterically bulky isobutyl groups. See this uh, phenyl ring is connected to this silicon atom by the alkyl chain. And in case if you want to increase further the st steric hindrance of this uh, stationary phase, you can use the bulky functional groups like isobutyl groups. We will talk about this one uh, very important aspect in the coming slides. Inclusion of oxygen in the linker to activate the pi electron system in the aromatic ring. Oxygen present into this uh, alkyl chain increases this uh, pi electron system. That means your pi body will be efficiently working and so you will have the better pi pi interaction. We will talk about one of the example where this oxygen group is included in this uh, alkyl chain. And the last one is about the presence or absence of end capped silica stationary phase. Okay, now let us talk about some of the commercially available phenyl stationary phases. And the first one is ethyl phenyl with methyl side groups. So here is the phenyl group which is connected to your silicon atom with the help of ethyl chain and it has got the methyl side groups. So these are the two methyl side groups connected to the silicon atom. In addition to this, this particular stationary phase is end capped with this trimethyl silane. So what is the mechanism of separation possible with this particular stationary phase? As there is a pi body, the pi pi interaction between the analyte and the stationary phase is very much possible or the stationary phase phenyl group is very much possible. The second point is there is also a small ethyl chain present, not much big, but still there is a possibility of hydrophobic interaction due to this alkyl chain. And third one is there is going to be a reduced secondary silanol interaction due to the end capped silica surface. The second commercial example of phenyl bonded stationary phase is phenyl hexyl phase with extended hexyl ligand spacer. That means this is the spacer which is the six carbon chain or the hexyl. Now what is the importance of this hexyl? because this is going to also increase the hydrophobic interaction. So the hexyl stationary phase is also very important and it has got methyl side groups. You can see over here the first methyl group and the second methyl group. And in addition to all of this, this is the end capped silica surface. These are the possible interaction, the pi pi interaction because of this phenyl ring hydrophobic interaction due to this uh, hexyl alkyl chain and the reduced secondary silanol interaction because of the end capped silica surface. The third example is the phenyl group phase with extended propyl ligand. It is just like the hexyl one. The only difference is what now you have got this uh, propyl chain connecting phenyl with the silicon atom. Rest all is similar. So the mechanism of separation is also going to be the similar to that of phenyl hexyl phase. The fourth one is ethyl phenyl ligand with steric protection. Now this is very important functional groups which can also help you to separate out the positional isomers. 
So you got the phenyl chain, uh, sorry, phenyl ring connected to the silicon with the help of uh, ethyl chain. And this silicon atom has got two bulky isobutyl functional groups. Now, because of this, this stationary phase uh, will have the least interaction with the silanol groups, SiOH groups, because of this bulky isobutyl. And because of that, the secondary silanol interaction can be prohibited. In addition to that, being a bulky functional groups, you can also expect the steric hindrance or the steric interaction can be possible because of the addition of this bulky uh, isobutyl group. The fifth example is hexyl biphenyl with methyl side groups and end capped silica surface. So here is the biphenyl means two phenyl rings connected to this uh, silicon silica surface with the help of this uh, hexyl chain. So six carbon chain is also connected, connecting the silicon to this biphenyl and it also presents the uh, end capping because of the trimethyl silane groups. So these are the possible mechanism of separation. Pi pi interaction because of this biphenyl, hydrophobic interaction because of this uh, hydrophobic alkyl chain, which is hexyl chain, Reduced secondary effect, silanol effect because of the column end capping and also this becomes now, this biphenyl becomes the much bulky groups and because of that steric interaction is very much possible. The sixth example is biphenyl phase with methyl side groups and end capped silica surface. You have the biphenyl chain over here, biphenyl functional groups connecting to this uh, silicon with the help of the methyl and there are side chains uh, which got blocked because of this end capping. So you can expect the little or reduced end, uh, secondary silanol effect in addition to the pi pi interaction and hydrophobic interaction. The steric hindrance is also possible due to this bulky biphenyl group. The next phenyl bonded stationary phase is called as the oxygen activated phenyl bonded phase means this particular stationary phase has got the oxygen you know connecting your phenyl and this alkyl chain it also is the end capped stationary phase so you can see the trimethyl silane present over there and it has got the two methyl groups present onto the side of the silicon a silicon atom so what is the mechanism of separation? The first one is pi pi interaction because of this uh, phenyl group, hydrophobic interaction because of this uh, alkyl chain. Uh, and then there is a reduced secondary signal effect because of this column end capping. And the, the fourth one is very important and interesting to understand. There is embedded polar group like ether linkage, which improves the peak shape for basic compound and also increase the wettability. So you must have seen that mostly our C8 or C18 hydrophobic stationary phases may not be used with a mobile phase containing 100% aqueous. However, this wettability can get increased because of this embedded polar functional groups. And hence, this stationary phase can be used with a 100% aqueous mobile phase. In addition to the usage of 100% uh, aqueous mobile phase, this inclusion of an oxygen atom in the linker also activates the pi electron system. So the pi pi interaction is going to be much more effective because of the presence of this oxygen, which actually activates this pi body or pi systems. In addition to this point, I would like to also emphasize on this embedded polar group such as amide, carbamate, ether, urea improves the peak shape of the basic compound and also allows the usage of 100% aqueous mobile phase. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video until end and I would like to also understand what is your view on this particular topic.